So this is uh, a little bit of bro science that you get inside <laughs> of like bodybuilding stuff is yeah. you can't gain muscle without a calorie surplus. And as Tanner, um, at your body fat and I, I that's the bro science. Yep. Okay, yep. Mm -hmm. at, at your body fat. Uh, and I, I prove, prove this too. I was at similar body fat is that you can totally lose, lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. I believe with the DEXA scan, I, I lost like, I think it was like 10 pounds of fat or eight pounds of fat and gained seven pounds of muscle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's another good reason why you do DEXA because the scale wouldn't change much, <laughs> but that's obviously like a great shift. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is true, Tanner, that this is where the bro science does get in is as you get stronger and stronger and your body fat gets lower and lower, it is extremely hard to gain mm -hmm. muscle without having a, a caloric surplus. Um, and then there's uh, people who do weight training or bodybuilding have different amounts and they have, they call it like a clean bulk where maybe there are 200 calories a day over mm -hmm. and they have the dirty bulk, which is more than they call it the dream bulk. And the dream bulk <laughs> means you eat whatever you want. Like that's the Popeye bulk <laughs> yeah. um, where you eat whatever you want and your body fat shoots up. Was but, that, was that your bulk plan for a while before you started eating? Clean? I, I, when I was in my lower twenties, um, I could eat a ton of food. <laughs> kind of, it was kind of like Brandon who's here. Yeah. I could eat everything and still be the skinniest person mm -hmm. around. Yeah. And I could, I could dream bulk. It was really hard for me to gain weight. Yeah. Now that I'm 36, doesn't no, problem. <laughs> it doesn't, no problem. I, yeah. I can, I can gain 10 pounds. Well, today. <laughs> typically when we talk about this, we're talking about high volume training too. Mm -hmm. So people who are trying to do a ton of work and they're restricting their calories such that the two just don't even closely align yeah. at all. That so gets really tough. Yeah. That, it gets impossible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just can't do it. So try to do 20 hours of sweet spot and shave 800 calories off of your daily intake. It's not going to happen. Gonna so, so there are different situations. You're talking about getting strong and shedding some weight, but you're talking about getting strong in like the strength training sense of things. Those mm -hmm. two can work really well together. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, especially if you've come into a situation now where you're, you're running that little deficit and then if you're doing a good amount of activity, but not something that's going to wear you down like that. And it's that high intensity stuff. I think a lot of people think that just because it's high intensity that you don't burn any fat across the board. And, and that's not necessarily the case. Once again, we're talking about a system of faders, not like a intensity mm -hmm. goes up, light switch goes off. And it's the, the stuff you burn after. The, the exactly. The, the excess or yep. the, the epoch. Yeah, you keep doing it thereafter. So. Uh, the last thing I want to say is uh, people have asked, you know, we, I like the Nokia scale because it syncs to my phone. Mm -hmm. And I've been getting on the Tanita and the Nokia every day. Uh, unfortunately, the Tanita is like 1%, one point higher than the Nokia. So um, you like the Nokia much better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's the, the Tanita is obviously wrong. <laughs> it's better uh, news. Yeah. But uh, so far, that. it's been consistent one point each time. And we kind of talked about it. All I want is consistency because yeah. I don't. I'm using the DEXA as like my real number mm -hmm. or body fat calipers mm -hmm. and the scale I'm using as tracking small stuff, but it, it that too, it changes daily based on, uh, uh, hydration. Yeah, totally. Uh, you'll see actually in the image, the thumbnail image for this podcast, if you look on, <clears throat> if you look on uh, blog.trainero.com or on YouTube or anything else, you'll see the scale that we had in there. Um, and that's actually the, the Garmin scale that I've been using the index and I've been using that one, uh, and it checks directly for me straight across the board with my Tanita. So um, it's actually, I think the most variance I've seen is 0.2%. So it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's, there's plenty of different options. Also, in some cases, I've heard of people using these scales and just not having good results with them. So I don't know if it's kind of like optical heart rate where like <laughs> for some people, like with Chad and I, with pasty skin, optical heart rate works great for us. It's the only perk of being pasty. Fair. I think it's the low. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Chad. It's, the, uh, <laughs> it's the only perk that we have of being pasty is that heart rate monitors work on our wrists. So. Uh, the, uh, at the extremes, it can be kind of hard. So when you're yeah. like really low body fat, people get weird numbers and <laughs> like boohoo. Sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still yeah, like one of my favorite stories is Keegan was all excited to get this because he heard about us doing the DEXA scans. Keegan Swenson. So he went and did a bod pod one where like they pressurize a thing and it just threw the error code. <laughs> That's all it threw with him. <laughs> Impossible. Because <laughs> he was that skinny. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Uh, last one was from Ruse. I assume that's how you pronounce it. Uh, if not, uh, I apologize. It says, hey guys, big fan of the podcast and having listened to about 90 so far and together with my girlfriend, we recently became trainer road users as well. Awesome. Uh, I've learned a lot from you guys and really appreciate it. Our pleasure. That's the whole point is to, to help y'all. says, 
Uh, I read Nutrient Timing last week on holiday after Chad recommended it and then started Sweet Spot Base Mid Volume to kick off my training for next season. One of the first workouts is Taku, that's T-A-K-U, and Chad's notes labor the point about the benefits of recovery and active recovery. Makes sense as it might be the first recovery ride for, uh, ever for riders that are new to structured training. Mm -hmm. It's like you thought of it, Chad. It's amazing, <laughs> huh? Uh, he says, it got me thinking. And this is a great point that he makes is the real benefit of active recovery actually that it makes the muscles insulin sensitive again, giving you another shot at the recovery window. He says in quotes to get nutrients into them as discussed in nutrient timing. Does that then suggest that doing nutrition? And he says, once again, in quotes properly for recovery rides is actually really important if you want to take full advantage and that active recovery is about priming your muscles for nutrition driven recovery as much as possible while trying to limit or prevent further muscle damage. Uh, he mentions the temptation is not to bother with specific nutrition because the rides are so easy, but if you do your nutrient, nutri nutrient timing, taking on carbs and protein during and after you'll restore glycogen and rebuild muscle faster than if you stayed in an inactive insulin resistant state, or if you didn't take the opportunity to fuel. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting theory. I mean, usually we talk about, you know, like, um, it being good to, you know, flush byproduct and that sort of stuff for yeah, just I'll, accumulating I'll go into stress. A number of the intended benefits. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'll just say potentially this could be one of the benefits that you achieve. Uh, it, it depends what you want out of it. Are you looking for an opportunity to further your post-workout nutrition or, you know, pre next workout nutrition, then yeah, that could be a case for, uh, increasing your in the moment insulin sensitivity so that you can uptake more nutrients into the cell and pack in a bit of glycogen and, mm -hmm. and further muscle recovery, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's not my intention and there, it flies in the face of what a lot of my attentions are with the recovery rides, especially the uh, same day recovery rides where you're doing a, a pre depleted or at some level of muscle depletion, glycogen depletion is still present and you're getting on and a lot of the cell signaling and the genetic signaling that they were after with those would be negated or avoided mm -hmm. if you, you know, took on food at that point. Mm -hmm. So could work. I don't see why not. If that's what you want, if you want another opportunity to fuel, maybe for whatever reason you feel the next workout is going to require a higher level of repletion, glycogen repletion, then this could be a good way to do it. There is evidence that supports that even low level exercise does increase insulin sensitivity. So it doesn't mean you have to do a heck of a lot of work to, to improve your insulin sensitivity. Mm. So, yep. But let me talk about what my intended benefits are and what most, I think, coaches' intended benefits of recovery rides or recovery workouts are. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is what I just mentioned, the, the cell adaptation that takes place and therefore the, or ideally, the endur endurance performance improvement that comes as a consequence of it. And that's all down to that cell signaling mm -hmm. increases in mitochondrial content. So your ability to aerobically metabolize substrate, you know, fat and carbohydrate, increased capillaries, you know, more, more blood distribution and removal from the actual muscle bed, mm -hmm. increase in aerobic enzymes so that you can do more work aerobically, the, the materials needed to metabolize um, carbohydrate and fat aerobically become, uh, you get more of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then we don't talk about this very often, but it's a big get with recovery rides is lymph drainage. Mm. So the interstitial fluid, all the fluid that's around your cells, it's on a whole different system. It's on a lymph system. And that lymph system isn't driven by by heart rate. It's driven by muscle contraction. So you get on the bike and even at low levels of muscle contraction, you're actually facilitating that lymph removal. And that's a big, that's an important thing. And you talk about getting bloated and looking puffy and edemic and all that, that that's typically excess lymph in the system. Mm -hmm. That's not going to get out when, when you kick back and, and skip these low intensity recovery rides or go for a walk for that matter. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course we want to stimulate blood flow for all the obvious reasons. I mean, repair and you know stuff to the blood or to the muscle and, and from the muscle. You reduce stress psychologically. Just getting on the bike and going for an easy spin can do wonders for your brain and for your cognition. I noticed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, reducing inflammation and not just in the muscle, but you know other, other aspects of the body. And there's a potential for additional fiber recruitment. So if you get on the muscle or you get on the bike when your muscles are in a fatigue state, those m more fatigued muscle fibers are less likely to be recruited, whereas other muscles that don't typically contribute to the pedal stroke might get, might get recruited. Mm -hmm. So now you're, f you're increasing the level of neuromuscular innervation to other muscle fibers that are there but ne don't necessarily get used when you ride your bike. So the cooked fibers get to take a break and the underutilized fibers get to contribute. And then as far as, you know, losing or, you know, suffering any, uh, he said, prevent further muscle damage, ingest some protein prior to your recovery rides. Yeah. You're not going to get a big insulin response. You're not going to mess with, at least not to the same level, all those uh, cell signaling responses we're trying to get by doing a glycogen depleted, re depleted, yeah. 
So, you know, just, just take on a bit of, uh, feed your muscles, basically take on a bit of protein. Yeah. I can totally see the paleo guy right now. And he's saying it's because our bodies are supposed to eat after chasing down some sort of an antelope or something like that. Yeah. And that's how, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it makes sense. And if it's something where you feel like you really want to feed, I can see this being helpful. If you are doing a recovery ride and th the next day, you have something pretty big. Sure. Uh, that's, you know, then you want to make you. It's yeah, it's interesting, actually. I, I'd never considered it. I, it's an interesting idea. How yeah. low is a recovery ride? Percent of FTP. What do I recommend in the recovery yeah. rides? Um, it's, it can be a bit subjective, but nothing over 60%. So I like it anywhere from 45 to 55. I mean, I want it to feel easy the I like whole those time. 40s. So I, I did, uh, I've been doing 45% uh -huh. and I really like 45%. And last year with my big increase, I was doing a lot of 45s before my big weekend. Sure. Mm -hmm. I like 45 for an hour. And I also feel that it, it's a good fat burner because mm -hmm. it's so low. And based on that, um, yeah, those gas exchange tests, we saw yeah. it's so low that it's like almost completely There's fat. Very little demand for glucose when you're working yeah. that, that easily. Mm -hmm. So I haven't told you guys that this yet, but I've decided to burn myself out on high volume. Uh, so we saw base high volume again. Ooh. So I'm one weekend. Great choices. I've, I've tried this three times before, and every time I failed. <laughs> but what, this time, what are you going to do differently this, this time? This time will be different because um, – so how, how the difference between that and mid-volume are basically the hard workouts are – there's more intervals and they're longer. I think I respond really well to those two hours and 90-minute sweet spot intervals. Whew. But – the Wednesday not, not work intervals, but workouts. Workouts, yeah. Two-hour, 90-minute sweet spot interval might Ooh, be pretty tough. That'd be hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Wednesday ones were more aerobic, like the, the pet it yeah. and kind mm -hmm. of backstrish ones. I am taking those out. I was just going to say, even those can be destructive. I mean, they're, they're, they're too much for me. Yeah. I know for, for sure. I, I, I feel worse after those days, not better. Does this mean but you're those going to drop down the occurrence of Baxter in your ride feed? Yeah. Yeah, but People. see, those aren't, those aren't recovery rides. Those are, those are endurance yeah, rides. Yeah, those are aerobic rides. Those yeah. aren't recovery rides. There, there are people that are like, there's a drinking game about that, I think, with this podcast. Okay. Sober Maybe people. Maybe some sober folks now. Um, but I'm doing <laughs> the, the, the 45, at least my plan that I put so far on Trainer Road's calendar, now available, Trainer <laughs> Com. Subtle plug. Um, I have the 45 minutes. I have, sorry, one hour at 45% FTP. And that's a custom workout that I created with our workout creator. Mm -hmm. And then the question is on Fridays, it's like pet it is scheduled. That even that might be too much. I'm going to try to do it. Yeah. But I don't want what, what, what could be hard is Thursday's a 90 minute. Saturday and Sunday are two hours. So on Friday, mm. if Friday puts me back at all, Saturday and Sunday get really hard. And exactly. So, yeah, they could be too hard for me because I, the like the regular high volume is too much for me. Mm -hmm. um, some people would, you know, it's just right, and some people it's too or not enough. But just the idea of kind of some of those aerobic rides, taking those out and putting these type of rides in, that's also easier mentally. That's an across the board recommendation. <clears throat> Anytime you're struggling with your training and your hard days, you, you just can't do what's necessary to, to you know, hit the numbers you're supposed to hit, derive the benefit where the, the is intended. It can be simply because those easy days aren't easy enough. I mean, who, mm -hmm. who knew? Everybody knows. But 65% might not be easy enough. 55% might not be easy enough. So, mm -hmm. but I do still want you to get on the bike. I yeah. mean, there are some days where, you know, I'm just too tired to even throw a leg over the saddle. So you don't, but most of the time you can get on for 30 minutes at 45% of threshold, derive a benefit, be recovered, be fresh for those upcoming rides. And, and you're not off the mark. You didn't fail because you decided to take a ride that was 90 minutes to 65% and tone it down to 30 minutes at 45%. You might think you're not, nothing is happening, but based on what you oh, just no. said. There is. And I, I totally feel that I get – every time I do a 45% one, I lean out a bit. And, like, it's probably all in my head, but I'm like, ooh, your arms got more vascular. <laughs> like, it's just – If it, it motivates you. That's exactly. Thing, yeah, right? but no, that's, and, no, that's real. Yeah. Uh, like I can't watch TV at the really intense stuff and even sweet spot. It can get, I switch between TV and music, mm -hmm. but at 45%, I can watch down, downtown Abbey. Like, I, read I, can watch anything. <laughs> I can read when I do recovery rides. Yeah. And process. I was reading yesterday. Words. It was, it's, yeah. it's fun. Like mm -hmm. it's the de-stressor, but yeah. you're also improving your fitness, even though it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you like that video, you should subscribe to our channel. There's more where that came from. And even like the video down below with a thumbs up or leave us a comment. If you want to see race analysis videos, click right over here. And if you want to get your coaching questions answered, click over here. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, head over to trainerroad.com. It works. Trust us. Just trust us. <laughs> we guarantee it. Oh, yeah. Or your money back. It's true. Take us up on it.